and the cross-executing flaw um, exists in the username variable. And basically, special characters aren't filtered out, and this allows you to inject JavaScript code. And for more information on this tag, uh, like I said before, watch episode 13. So basically, we're going to do the single quote, and then we're going to take that script that we saw in the sample victim, the basically the script that injects the cross site scripting JavaScript, and we're just going to copy that, and that's what we want to inject into the page. And this will basically load in the shell and all the JavaScript into the victim's browser and allow the attacker to send commands to the victim. Since PHP automatically has um, add slashes on, we can't use the quotes in the source variable. So we're going to find some way to inject this code without using quotes. And one way of doing this is to take the code we want to inject, the script, source equals to our process between shell, whatever, and convert it into ASCII code. And we're just going to use a simple JavaScript ASCII converter, automatically convert it for us, because you can do it by hand, but it would take forever. You probably find a couple online. Uh, I just found this one real quick. Uh, the only bad thing is it puts spaces in between each uh, each ASCII code, uh, and and Firefox will complain about that. So I'm just going to open up Notepad plus 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 and do a find replace on it, and uh, just take it out real quick. All right, I'm going to use the JavaScript function string dot from character code to take those numbers and convert it back into ASCII characters. And then I'm going to use the JavaScript function document.write to take that code and write it onto the page. And this will allow us to inject this, this script without using quotes. Um, there's probably several other ways to do this. This is the only way I could think of uh, on the spot. And we'll just test it here to make sure it works. And as you'll notice, um, the way that the cross site scripting shell works is it puts the victim into an iframe, and to do this, it has to reload the page, which uh, can cause some problems with, uh, with your attack, especially if you're uh, on like a form or something where there's only one page, because what it'll do, instead of reloading the search page, it'll reload the, the forms page, like the, the normal page, because it all uses the same PHP file, it'll just take you back to the main form page, which is, uh, could cause some problems if you're trying to attack someone that knows a little bit about, you know, hacking. Um, but I would imagine most people that you do this attack on probably wouldn't even notice or know what's going on. And if you go back to the admin console, you'll see that uh, our browser did show up as one of the victims, so it is working properly. And if you notice down in the status bar, which uh, could also give away that you're doing an attack, is it's constantly sending data to our attacker's website, which uh, it's pretty much a dead giveaway that something something's going on. But like I get, like I said before, uh, you know, there's dumb people out there. So, and if you notice, uh, like I said before, it kind of creates that virtual environment uh, in the iframe. So if you click on links in the website or outside the website, you'll still stay in that iframe um, and still keep the, the victim browser infected, allowing the attacker to continuously set commands. And as you'll notice, as I click on different links, the browser's URL stays the same, even if I go to a website outside of infinitesist.com. Um, the only way to uninfect the browser is to manually change the, the URL or go back or whatever. Okay, and now we're ready to launch this attack. Basically, I'm just going to do what I did before in our last episode on process scripting. I'm going to make a form post saying that I found some kind of flaw, and I'll just paste the URL to our non-persistent process scripting attack right in the, the message, right in the post. But if you look at the, the link, it's pretty obvious that, you know, Something's going on, so we're just going to use the the ASCII uh, hex converter that we used in episode 13 again, and we're just going to convert it to uh, into hex. So it's, it makes it a little bit harder to see uh, something's going on. You know? And 
And uh, as you can see, our URL is pretty large. Um, a persistent cross-site scripting attack would be ideal for this the cross-site scripting tunnel, but that's not really realistic to find because nowadays um, persistent cross-site scripting attacks are very rare. So it's more realistic. That's why I'm doing the non-persistent cross-site scripting attack because it's it's more common. And I'm just going to click on the link again just to test it one more time, just to make sure it's working. And as you can see, it is. So all we need to do is wait until an admin clicks the link. Alright, we're just going to switch to the victim computer right now. And I'm going to log in as Patchy on the exist, which is an admin. And And I'm just going to go to the forums and click on this very convincing link posted by attacker. switch back to the attacker computer, you'll see that uh, Apache's browser pop up and under the victims table and now we'll be able to issue different commands to that victim's browser. Also if you put your cursor over the victim, some uh, information about that victim will pop up, basically the, the browser and what version of the browser they're using. And we're just going to click on just different commands, um, get cookies to get the the victim's cookies, and you can get the the current page's HTML code. And all you do is click on that HTML link, and it'll, it will show up in in the, the viewer window. If you scroll down, you can see that. Except the current page that the victim's on is encoded, so it's you're not going to get any, much information out of it. If it's not, then you'll be able to see the. HTML code included. And also we can make an alert message box pop up on the victim. But you just type in what you want to say down that box below and click on the alert command. And if we switch over to the victim, you'll see our message popped up. The interesting thing about that is if you have a whole bunch of people infected by your cross-site scripting shell, when you issue that alert command, it'll be alerted to all of them. And there's a few other commands here. You got the eval command, which will basically execute any JavaScript on the victim's computer. You can prompt a question. If the browser is supported, you can get keylogger information, um, mouse information. Uh, if you, if the victim has a Internet Explorer um, browser, you can get the current clipboard content. Um, let's click on that right here, and you'll see that. Because the victim's using Firefox, it's not supported. And uh, you have the, uh, the visited links, internal IP. Uh, you retrieve the current page with the, the victim's credentials. So if they're in like a logged in page, you can skip that. Uh, but like I said before, it's encoded, so we're not going to get much out of that. Uh, and there's the uh, Denial of service attack that you can do, where you can crash, you can use the crash command to try to crash the victim's computer, and you also can get the current URL. And uh, as you can see, it shows that really long URL that we put in before. So. And that's pretty much it for the admin console. Um, next, we're going to show you the cross-site scripting tunnel, which is much more useful. Now that we have the cross-site scripting shell set up and we have a victim who has fallen for the attack, uh, we can take advantage of the other tool that came with the download. It's the cross-site scripting tunnel. Uh, basically this works by uh, routing the HTTP traffic through the cross-site scripting channel. Uh, this allows the attacker to uh, 